Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at installing WireGuard inside of a Proxmox container and what it takes to start the process. We will be using a script today and the script that we're going to be using is one that is made from the same person that makes the Proxmox's tutorial script for installing OpenVPN. So here if we look at Proxmox's tutorial and we scroll down, it has you downloading a script from GitHub that's from a guy called NYR. And sorry, I don't have a good pronunciation for that. NYR makes this particular script right here, and this is the one for OpenVPN that we use for installing OpenVPN in many of our tutorials, and the one that Proxmox suggests in their own documentation. Well, he also makes this script from the same character for installing WireGuard. So let's take a look at what the process is for actually getting this running inside of a Proxmox LXC. The first thing we're going to need to do is to download our template if we already don't have one. And to do that, we're going to go to local or the default location where you are storing your template images, and we're going to select CT templates. From CT templates, we'll select template and we'll go ahead and search for Ubuntu. After we search for Ubuntu, we're going to be choosing the 22.04 image, which is our current LTS image for Ubuntu, and we'll press download. Now, I already have this image on my system, so I'm going to go ahead and exit this screen. But if you didn't, you would wait until it said task OK, and then you could close the screen. Here's the image here on my system that we're going to go ahead and use. Now that we have that image, let's go ahead and go up to Create CT. And at Create CT, we're going to need to fill out some information here. The first thing we're going to need to give it is a name and a password. Then we can hit Next, select our template that we downloaded, again, Ubuntu 22.04. And we can press Next. 8 gigs should be fine. 1 CPU should be fine. 512 of RAM should be fine. And for networking, we need to configure our bridge. If that's the case for your network, it is for mine. Select static and then assign this an IP address. Now later on, we're going to need to do something called port mapping inside of our router. And to do this port map, we're going to need to have a static IP address either assigned from the router or inside of Proxmox. I choose to manage this inside of Proxmox myself, so that's why we are assigning a IPv4 address today. I'm assigning 192.168.2, and I'm going to go 104. Now this is for my network. Your network, of course, may be different. Then I'm going to add a slash 24 at the end, which is a CIDR notation for a 255, 255, 255, 0 network or class C network. Then we're going to give it our gateway address. And again, this will be different on your network, most likely. Hitting next, we're asked what we want to use for DNS information. The default for our system will be fine. So we'll hit next, look through everything and press finish. Proxmox will automatically create our container and tell us when it's finished with a task OK, like so. Now we can go ahead and close this window, select our server, select shell, and Proxmox will open another window that I'll show you momentarily. Let's go ahead and look at the OpenVPN documentation because we actually need to pass through a networking device called TUN from the host system to the container, which is going to allow us to create a virtual type connection between the container's virtual Ethernet port and the WireGuard installation, which will allow us to connect and talk to the network. Here's the directions to do so. So let's go ahead and pull up our console. And we're going to start by using nano to configure the LXC's configuration file. So we're going to need to edit this 123.conf to whatever name of our container is assigned. For us here on Proxmox, our container was assigned 113, but this might differ 
for your tutorial depending on how many other containers and VMs you have on your system. So we're going to change this number here to 113 again to match that ID number that Proxmox gave our container and we'll press enter. Now we'll scroll down to the bottom and we're going to add two individual lines that will allow the Proxmox container to mount that TUN device and use it for network configuration for this container. Here's the first line which which is going to be LXC cgroup2.devices.allow and a user ID and guest ID as well. And the next one's going to be an LXC mount entry. Now, these commands will be provided to you in the document section if you wish to copy and paste. To close out Nano, we're going to hit Control X, Y, and Enter. Then we need to go ahead and configure that dev slash network slash tone device in order to have the user permissions to communicate with the container. To do so, we're going to use the command chown, and it's going to be 100,000 colon 100,000 for the user and guest, and then we specify the file path. The last step we can do is optional, but it is a good one to do ahead of time so that you have no worries as you're troubleshooting. And that's gonna be an ls-l on that devnet file structure. And you can see it outputs a read, write, read, write, and read, write for 100,000 and 100,000. So we're ready to close out of the system shell window and start up our WireGuard container. To do so here at the web interface, we're gonna select our WireGuard container. We'll press start and console, and then we can log in with root and the password we set up when we created the container. Now, if we run a simple IPA, we'll see that static IP address has been assigned to this container that we set up when we configured the container. The first thing we always do when we start up a new Linux operating system, especially Ubuntu, is to run an APT update, which is gonna update all your repositories. And I like to string it together with two ampersands and an apt upgrade and we'll add the dash y to auto answer the question so this will download all of the newest software repositories for ubuntu 22.04 and also install any software that's out of date now that we have all of our updates finished it's time to actually install wireguard looking at our github repository from this particular user we're given a command which is going to use wget to reach out to the file path or actually url path to this github repository download a script and then it's going to execute the script as bash now this script will run perfectly fine here because we're in a root user but if you weren't in a root user you'd need to add sudo here at bash and that will allow you to use sudo to install this command as an admin. So we'll just highlight the command they want us to execute and hit copy. Then we'll head back to our container and we'll paste it in and we'll press enter. This is my public IP address, so I can press enter. It's going to ask us which port we want to use. Today we're going to be using the default WireGuard point port, but we're going to want to note that port so we can do our NAT configuration here momentarily. Pressing enter, it's going to ask us a client name. We can assign whichever client name we want. I'll call mine phone today. We'll press enter. It's going to ask us which DNS server. I'm choosing Google. Again, you can choose whichever one you want. Then it's going to ask us if we want to automatically update. I generally choose yes and press enter. We can press enter again to install WireGuard. And at this point, WireGuard spits us out a nice QR code that we can use inside of our app to actually configure WireGuard on our window. Now, it's a little difficult here with my screen recorder. Now, if you enlarge your window like I am here, you can actually see the QR code and you can copy that into your Q your Wireshark client, depending on whichever system you're using. You can also note that if you have a client that can't support that QR code, maybe a desktop or something, there is a file path, and I would suggest using a tool called SCP to do so. We have some other directions on the website on what that file might 
or rather what that command might look like. So I won't cover that today. The last thing I do want to cover though is here under wireguard.com slash installs. Here's the installs for all the different WireGuard clients. And WireGuard has an up-to-date client for Windows and Mac, but you can see their client is actually out of date at this time for Ubuntu and Debian, and they suggest that we enable back ports at this time. But there are convenient directions for all kinds of different Linux operating systems as well as Mac and Windows. So now that we've covered different out of date things as a note, let's go ahead and head over to my SDN controller. I will show you how on an Amida SDN controller to actually configure this VPN so that you can communicate with it from an outside network. So here at the Almeida SDN controller, here's the initial page for my site. We're gonna select our site. Here at our site, it gives us information. We're gonna go ahead, select settings. Then we're gonna select transmission and NAT. Here you can see I already have a configuration that's filed in for my home network. But if I wanted to create another one, I'd hit create rule. I'd give it a name like so. I want my status to be enabled. My source IP address, I don't know what my public IP address is for my personal devices. So I'm gonna leave that as any. If you did, you could hit limited and enter it. My interface, I'll select WAN because it's coming in from the internet. My source port will be that port that we configured in the installation of OpenVPN. For us, the default port was used, so we'll use 51820. Our destination IP address is going to be the IP address of the container that is running Proxmox or the Proxmox container that is running WireGuard and the destination port again will be 51820 because that's the port we configured and we'll leave protocol as all because I believe that WireGuard uses a combination of TCP and UDP unlike OpenVPN which has to be configured to use either TCP or UDP and defaults to UDP. You can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong with that, but that is my belief at this time. Now we hit create, it gives us a notice, we can hit okay, and our rule is set, so now we can communicate with the outside internet back to our WireGuard container on our Proxmox server. One last thing I would suggest that you do for your particular installation is to create a new user account and disable your root account. To do so, you enter add user, the username will use VE, fill out all the questions that it asks, answer yes for the information being correct, issue that command again with sudo because if you do any management of this container, you are going to need super user permissions. After all, we're gonna get rid of the root account. Then you enter exit, log back in as that user, and issue the command sudo pass wd dash l and root, which will disable login for the root user, making it effectively impossible to use. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it informational, and are now able to start using and are now able to start using WireGuard inside of a Proxmox container. I hope you found our tutorial on the Almeida SDN and port forwarding beneficial, even if it didn't apply to your device. As always, have a good night and please like, share, and subscribe to help virtualize everything continue to grow.